from Woodsy Summercraft. Today I'm hoping that this is the third part, last part, hopefully, of fixing my Laguna lathe. If you didn't watch part one and two, um, part one was showing that I had a broken VFD. Uh, it wasn't working. Part two was my attempt at repairing the VFD and part three is my attempt to replace the VFD with another one. Um, now it's not the exact same model, it's a different model. I was going to buy one from uh, Laguna and uh, it was kind of expensive. They wanted a thousand dollars for a, um, a a new VFD programmed and uh, ready for me to install. But a thousand dollars, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. I managed to pick one up for $375 taxes in and programmed from a fellow that I know and uh, I will put a link to his uh, his shop he's from Sterling Motors in fact uh, he has a card here somewhere I'll dig it out in a minute but uh, basically what I've got is let's see it's a tech top it's a tech top VFD and if you see on this side, it is one and a half kilowatts, two horsepower, AC input, AC one horse, one phase, 200 to 240 volts, 15.7 amps, 50 to 60 hertz, output AC three phase, 7.5 amps, 50, 60 hertz, and it's given me dimensions and weight. Now it's pretty similar in size compared to the one that I bought on. Amazon which was quite a bit smaller. We'll get them all out and we'll compare. So this is the Delta S1 which is the original VFD which fried as we know. This is one I bought on Amazon for I forget now it's about a couple of hundred bucks. Um, I thought that I'd be able to find one that would work and it may work but I wasn't convinced. This doesn't have the brake terminals that it said it would have so I decided not to go with it and I was kind of humming and hiring as to what I should do I wasn't even 100% sure what I was terminating to on this or how to set the parameters so I ended up talking to my old boss a friend of mine and he supplied me with this and uh, it's got the brake terminals the 240 volt, live and neutral or 240 volts, UVW for the motor and the ground, and then the control terminations. Now he's written down on a piece of paper the control terminations that I need, and he's set the parameters, and he's told me what parameters he used, and I will tell you what they are right now. So the parameters that he set, he set four parameters, if you can see that. P0.01 is set to 1, P5.01 is set to 1, P5.02 is set to 2, P0.06 is set to 2. That's the. I'm trying to read his writing, I'm not 100% sure what his writing is, but uh, that's basically all he changed. The four those four parameters is all he changed. So take a screenshot of that if that interests you. And then maybe you can do that yourself if you decide to go this route. Um, these are the control wires that I need. The five wires. And uh, this is how they are originally on the original VFD and that's what they are and that's what they're for in the new VFD so it's pretty straightforward straightforward he says okay so I needed something to terminate into this one the original one had a little box on the underside which is still hanging off the wires the one that I got on Amazon didn't come with one and I don't even know if you can attach one to this or not so I'm not using that anyway 
and the one that I got from my buddy Paul first of all it has an actual fan in here there is a cooling fan in there which the original one didn't have so that might create a bit of noise I don't really care it's noisy anyway wood turning can be noisy anyway so if it keeps the the uh, VFD cooler that's it that's so be it so this separate package here is a NEMA box not so much a box but I'll just pull it out of here for you okay so this is what goes on the bottom of the VFD and this is the front this is the back the two screw holes there line up with the screw holes in the VFD and uh, there's three spots for wires to come into it I do have four but I'm probably gonna stick two in one hole and then uh, once it's all put together there's that front cover which closes the box for terminations so that will be at the bottom of the VFD and at the top of the VFD it actually has like a little hood that goes over the top I guess it will stop stuff going into the top of the VFD um, it basically sits there like that doesn't do a whole lot but I guess it does something anyway I will use that as well I had to wedge this piece this metal piece I had to wedge that in there which was a bit challenging it was a bit of a bit of a nuisance I ended up pulling pulling this down to open this up and then tapping it in and then releasing it and it just locks it in place and that's for the two screw holes for the hood the top hood so that being said two of the screw holes top and bottom line up the height of the screw holes is exactly the same so I do still have to drill and tap two holes so if you're not comfortable with that hey you could probably leave the thing hanging by two screws maybe but uh, I'm gonna drill and tap the other two I'm gonna have a look inside the headstock first just to make sure there's nothing there that I'm gonna drill into but I honestly don't think there is because the electrical components are at the front of the uh, headstock so this so let's is the quick... back of the lathe where the VFD is going to sit. It was mounted to these two screw holes, screws, and these two screws. Now if I grab the VFD now, it sits on that bottom screw quite comfortably. And the top lines up with that screw hole. But the other two screw holes do not line up, so I need to drill a hole there and at the bottom so just so I don't drop this VFD break another one I'll set that aside and I'll make sure that I can drill just below these two holes just to the right of that hole there and the same down the bottom I'll have a look inside so I don't know if you can see that there's the one screw hole so I'm literally just going to be to the left of that a little bit there is nothing there that I'm going to damage the other screw hole if I can get in there okay the other screw hole is just there right there and I'm just going to be to the left of that a little bit again there's nothing there that will get damaged so I'm okay to go ahead and just drill right through that and tap uh, an 832 into those two spots there and there. So I'm going to take the VFD and I'm going to put it on, on that screw there and I'm going to screw the top screw in place. If I can find a screwdriver, there's a screwdriver and one of the original screws. Now I th I'm not sure if these are 632 actually, but they're very close to 632, although they may well be a metric thread. Either way, we'll get that in there. Okay. Like I said, once it's in place, it can't really go anywhere. 
that's just with the one screw tightened down. What I'm going to do though is take my pencil here, sharp, freshly sharpened pencil, and mark where I want to draw and tap. I'm actually going to go with 632, not 832. Okay, so those those are both marked. I know I don't have to worry about drilling into anything inside the headstock. And now I'm going to put that out of the way so I don't drop it. Now, can I see the holes, the marks? Yep, I see the marks. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and drill those. I believe this is a 1 8 drill bit. So it's a pretty small drill bit. Take it nice and easy. Should wear eye protection for this. Don't get messy in your eyes. That's one. And that drill bit is just ever so slightly smaller than the tap. Okay, that's both holes drilled and now I just need to tap these. Okay, I'm having to cheat because my tap handle will not accommodate this smaller tap, 632. So what I'm doing is I'm going to cheat, I'm going to use my drill. I got my drill in slow speed. You could have your clutch set way down if you want. That way if it catches it will stop like on a dime. As opposed to as opposed to snapping it but this is actually I've already done the bottom one so I'm going to just do the second one now I'm not sure I think <clears throat> yeah the other screws are metric of some sort so they're not the same but that doesn't matter so I'm just going to get them started in the holes. This is the part that I was kind of dreading really and it's not that terrible. He says. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. forward to and that was actually just mounting the thing uh, to make sure that it fits and it does fit and I drilled and tapped two new holes and I've got uh, 632 screws and washers on the two new holes that I drilled and the original screws in the other two holes so what I've got is a hood which goes on the top which the old one didn't have but it wouldn't be a bad idea to keep the shavings from getting stuck in there not that it's ever been an issue before but I think I'm going to use it just because I have it so the screws I believe are in the back the box yep they're in the box I'll get them out and I'll get that mounted and I'll be right back the VFD is in guys the hood little protective hood 
this will become the termination box with a lid to cover up the wires once they're in but it sits in there quite nicely yes it does okay I am going to get the wires out of the old box and into the new box and then I'll come back and we'll get some terminations done so the old box is off and the old connectors I'm not using them I'm discarding those and the new box which actually only has three holes now I could punch a fourth hole in it but I'm not going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the motor lead into this one the closest one because they terminate right here UVW and ground and then uh, the control wire I'm going to turn bring that in the middle and then the brake and the power cord I'm going to bring them in together on the left because they're both on the left in on the terminals the brake being right here an L1 and L2 going right there which is the same L1 neutral or L1 L2 same thing for this particular one it's set up for 220 volt single phase so that's how I'm going to do it and then I'm going to give a little bit of support to these with a clip this clip right here screwed into the original hole which is down there just to give them a little bit of support I'll get those in place and I'll come right back what I decided to do is to I've got the the motor lead in UVW and ground I'm going to terminate that right now and then I'm going to bring L1 L2 and the brake in and I'm going to terminate them second and then I'll bring the third one in the controls and then I'll terminate the controls just it's going to be easier that way rather than having all the wires here in one in one time I am not going to lie to you this is challenging uh, the screws are very small I have to take these screws out completely to get the eyelets in the eyelets that are on these wires are just a little bit too big um, I don't have anything smaller so I'm just kind of ovaling them rounding them off a little bit so they slide in there and uh, screwing them in it's not ideal but it will, it will be fine um, not ideal like I said but it will work now I have to get the control wires in before I terminate the two live wires because there's two live wire two wires here that terminate with the L1 and L2 and then of course there's two ground wires two ground wires I have to get under the ground terminal here in the back as well so that's basically it I'm gonna get this in right now terminate L1 and L2 and then I've just got the control wires to do the ground and the control wires so I'm gonna come back when I'm doing the control wires I'm at the point now where the only thing left to do is to terminate these five control wires if you look inside you can see the brake black is positive white is PB uh, L1 L2 are on L and N along with the black and white from the power cord then I've got a UVW which is red black white from the motor and then I've got the two grounds on the end screw which is one to the motor and one from the uh, the cord, the, the, the plug so now I have uh, these wires now to terminate up here and every wire has been long enough I had this horrible feeling that some of the wires were going to be too short but everything has reached so I am going to terminate them now and uh, hope for the best because we're nearly there we are nearly there five wires to terminate and these ones are going to be easy those ones in there were definitely challenging Make sure, making sure they're tight but yeah those were challenging because like I said the eyelets were just a little bit too big I had to bend them a little bit it was that or put other ones on which I don't have I didn't really want to have to do that so I managed to get them in all the wires are in there they're all tight under the screws so there's no loose connections so yeah if you want to do this or if you have to do this it is a challenge I'm just hoping for the best 
hoping that it doesn't <laughs> do anything untoward but we will find out shortly okay so I've got the terminations done for the controls so there's uh, one is on common two is on A12 three is on 10 volts plus four is on S1 and five is on S2 no other wires landed as far as controls goes there is a jumper in the back there on those back two terminals I forget what they were called actually and um, yeah everything's terminated so the question is does it work that's the question now so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug this in I'm once I've checked it as long as it's working I'm gonna put the uh, screw in here with a with a clip for these wires and uh, put the covers all back on and hopefully oh fingers crossed hopefully we're good okay so here we go okay so I'm gonna plug it in the breaker is turned off okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place you so you can watch the VFD does it turn on it's terminated it's plugged in the brake is still turned off I'm gonna go ahead and plug the breaker in see what happens with the VFD and if everything is good then we're gonna see can we uh, get it turning if it's in the right rotation or the wrong rotation if the forward reverse works the speed works the everything make sure it all works and uh, fingers crossed guys fingers crossed well the breaker is turned on there is lights on the VFD I'm assuming that's the frequency 48 Hertz 48.6 Hertz that's what that looks like okay Ooh, that's a good sign that's a good sign guys all right let's uh, come around the front and see if we can turn this thing on okay, so I am gonna pull the e-stop and hope for the best we have we have a zero it's not moving we have a zero that's a good sign and we're gonna turn speed is all the way down we're in forward, E stops pulled. I'm going to press the start button. The fan has come on, which makes sense. And now we're going to bring the speed up a little bit. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We got a, oh wow, 139 RPM. We got even less RPM than we had before, which is interesting. RPMs are coming up, six, seven hundred. Okay, so fifteen hundred RPM. That's actually half what it was before, so that's that's interesting. That could be a setting. That could be a setting because I would want it faster for pens. I press stop and it's slowing down at a decent rate. Nice, I like that. And we're going to put it in reverse. Slow speed and it is in reverse, that's good. Bringing the speed all the way up. And that brings it up to, again, uh, fifth, just over 1500 RPM. Which is not terrible, but I like to get a higher speed for pens and small things. So I might have to look into that. And it might be as simple as a belt change. Slowing down, 800, 700, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stopped. Now I am on... Okay, so I am on the far, the faster belt. So my RPMs are a bit slower than what they were originally with the other VFD. So there could be a setting to increase that. So I'm going to have to talk to the main man and ask him. But it's not too critical because most of my turning is, well, less than 1500 RPM. And the fan turned off. 
and the e-stop's pressed and guess what I'm going to do now unplug it every use the top speed was 1500 rpm which is 50% of what it should be so I was actually chatting with Paul the fellow that helped me out with this and he tells me that in the settings it is parameter 0 0.03 and 0 0.04 upper limit of the running frequency lower limit of the running frequency no sorry max output frequency upper limit of running frequency so I had to change them from 60 Hertz to 120 Hertz that's what he's telling me so that's what I'm doing okay so I'm just gonna give you a quick look at what I'm doing here because I'm not particularly good at this so I'm going to escape that, escape that, escape that. Okay, so so if I press escape and I want I want parameters param I want param I can't even say it parameter 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 oh for fuck's sakes. Okay, so I want par Kind of, oh my god. Okay, so let's do this. I've just changed parameter 0 0.03. I'm going to go to parameter 0 0.04. So I'm at parameter 0. That's parameter 0 0.04. Enter that. It's set at 60 hertz. I'm going to increase that to 120 hertz. Now I have to sit here probably for about five minutes because it takes a while for that to scroll all the way up. So I will speed that up for you. All right, I'm super pumped, totally excited, very happy, very grateful. Thank you, Paul, for helping me out with this. I really appreciate it, mate. Um, I just changed a couple of parameters. It was, uh, and I'm not 100% familiar with any of that kind of stuff. Programming BFDs is not something I've done hardly anything of. Yes, I'm an electrician at work, but uh, just we have engineers that do all the programming and stuff like that. So uh, having you help me out with that really helped. So uh, I just changed a couple of parameters because my top speed was 1500 RPM when it should have been 3000 RPM. So there was a couple of settings in there, P00.03 and 4. I changed them from 60 Hertz to 120 Hertz and that basically doubled the speed. So now I do in fact have 3000 RPM on the high speed, which is which is what this calls for. It actually says for 3500, but 3000 is plenty. Um, so there it is. I can show you this thing spinning now. It's only been a few months. That's the cooling fan turning on, which it didn't have before, and I don't mind ha having a cooling fan at all. My low speed there, I got 87 RPM. I never had it that low before, so that's that's pretty cool in itself. Up to 700. 1600. And it maxes out. 3,029 RPM that's fast enough for anything I need to be doing press stop and it decelerates the braking resistor is doing its job and there it stopped and then I can bring the speed back down put it in reverse press start and now it's going in reverse Again, I can get that a lot slower than it used to be. Wow, I'm turning at 44 RPM. Even with the original VFD, it never went that slow. That's awesome. And then I can bring that up. 1000 RPM. In reverse. Three thousand twenty-nine RPM. 
and I can press stop again and it's going to stop in just as quick a time without having the braking resistor it won't stop like that it, it would still be the momentum would just keep going and going so that's it thanks for watching I am now back up and running I have a big bowl uh, that I've got to turn for a fella at work I sold it to him probably about oh I don't know three months ago and uh, it is not finished turned yet so that's my first project on the lathe is going to be that big black locust uh, live edge bowl it's quite a big one it's I don't know it's quite a big one anyway um, so until then thanks for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe and I am so excited today you take care bye now it only works in forward slow speed speed it up yeah excellent